I'm tripping y'all for real. I haven't looked at buying a new vehicle in a while. And in that while, these car dealerships have inflated these prices on these new vehicles astronomically. Let me show y'all what I'm talking about. And let me know in the comments what your state and your city is doing with their car prices. I'm in South Carolina. Look at this truck. Dodge Ram. Laramie 4x4. Beautiful truck. Beautiful color. Got some fancy wheels on it. Step rails. No bed cover. Cloth seats. <laughs> no leather. Cloth seats, y'all. But like I'm showing y'all, this is a beautiful truck. It really is. I love the color. I bet y'all can't guess the price on this, though. But look at it, though. This is like a regular pickup truck. Nothing real fancy. Just got, a, like I say, a pretty paint job. But this truck is $75,000. Seventy-five. dollars 75 When did pickup trucks become this expensive? And nothing against Dodge, nothing against Dodge owners. But I'm just like, bruh, a pickup truck? $75,000? These Mercedes prices, you know what I'm saying? BMW prices, you know, luxury car, luxury SUV prices. Like I said, nothing against Dodge or Dodge owners, but it's just a Dodge Ram. No leather, cloth seats, like I say, fancy wheels, some step rails, okay. But this truck is $75,000. Maybe I need to get my money up, but I really think this is ridiculous. Let me know in the comments what y'all feeling in y'all state and y'all city. Hell yeah, man. Congratulations. Uh, That's amazing. Uh, Hell yeah. This has to be one of the craziest dealer markups I've seen in recent history. This dealer is asking for $215,000 on a pre-owned 2023 Cadillac Escalade V-Series. But as you can see, this car is practically brand new with only 139 miles on it. Okay, back to the price. The dealer wants nearly $215,000. But when we look at the window sticker, the MSRP in the car is just over $155,000. Now I get that the Escalade V is highly desirable, but a markup of $60,000 on a pre-owned Escalade V? Come on, guys. The used car market is completely crazy in May of 2023. Let's break it down, but with a quick disclaimer first, we're just the messenger, hate these prices more than you do, I promise. So what should you do, should you buy? Let's start with the 26 year graph showing the relative price increase of used cars. Zooming in on 22 and 23, there's a lot of volatility. Volatility is from a lot of downward pressures and upward pressures. Interest rates, fear of market collapse, and a modest increase in new car supply is pushing the price down. But the one upward pressure that's keeping it all afloat is low used car inventory. And that's not changing soon. Check out this graph. There are 30% less used vehicles in the market than in 2019. And the big reason is the lack of new cars from 2020 until today. That lack of production means that this graph will not crash anytime soon. Most think it'll take until 2026 for the market to get back to 3 million used cars. So original question, should you buy? If you should buy, it really depends on your finances and if you need a car in the next year. The market will stay volatile with a lot of ups and downs, but it will generally trend down for years. If you need a car now, now's a good time, especially if you're a cash buyer. With inflation cooling, it looks like rates will probably start coming down in the second half of the year, and that'll increase car sales. But even if you're financing with good credit, now could be a good time too. There's a car sales expression that you date the rate but marry the car. It's dumb, but it's also true. You can finance the rate later. So what do you think of this market? If you need to have a therapy session in the comments and go vent, have at it, but make sure to follow us for more dealership behind the scenes. Backstory, I did have a car. I actually had a very nice car. I had a 2018 Honda Civic. It was very scrumptious. It literally got the job done and it was just a nice car in general. My parents leased it for me. Um, and then when the lease term was up, they said, hey, Serena, do you want to buy the car? At the time, I was working in New York City, so I didn't need a car. So like a fucking idiot, I said, no, mom, I don't want to buy the car. Um, looking back on that, I should have fucking slapped myself because I should have purchased that car. That would have been like a great solution to my problems. Anyway, I didn't buy the car. They sold the car. Great, wonderful, whatever. And now I don't have a car. I haven't had a car for at least eight months now. Um, I have tried 
time and time again to buy a car and it's been an absolute catastrophe disaster every single time. My most recent experience was a few days ago when I went to the Nissan dealership. Now I know you're saying, Serena, why would you buy a Nissan? I don't want a Nissan. Honestly, the only reason I was looking at Nissan is because Nissans are the cheapest car on the market right now. So I go to the Nissan dealership and I find a fucking Sentra. It's 2023. Literally the base model. The only upgrade it has is the interior. So I'm looking at this car. I'm like, whatever, it's fine. It's good enough for me. It's $25,000. Now, $25,000 in my fucking mind for a Nissan is pushing it. You're fucking pushing it, okay? I sit down anyway, and magically, as soon as we sit at the table, it goes from $25,000 to $29,000. And I'm looking at the salesman, and I was like, sir, I totally understand, like, the registration fees and the dock fees, but I need a cost breakdown because the sticker price literally jumped, like, $4,000 in a matter of seconds. He's like, well, we don't give out the, the cost breakdown sheet. And I was like, if you can't give me a cost breakdown, I'm not interested in the car at all. So he leaves, he comes back, 10 minutes later, he magically has the cost breakdown. Me and my brother sit and we're looking through the sheet and we're going through. And when I tell you there was shit listed that I don't even know how you could charge for because it's not there, it's not in the car. My brother goes, hey, there's $300 listed here for window tint, but I didn't see any tinted windows in the car. This is the inside of the car. Do y'all see any tinted windows? Because I don't. So my brother is like, okay, well, that's giving very much suspicious. So me and him are like looking across the table like, bro, we got to get the fuck out of here. But then I was like, just out of curiosity, can you run me the numbers? This man leaves, comes back after 10 fucking minutes, probably sitting in the corner, like doing like this, because I don't know what type of math he did. He comes back and he goes, yeah, you're looking at a uh, 485 a month. 485 a month? For 45 a month, I should be fucking driving a Mercedes. I should be fucking pulling up in a Range Rover. I was besides myself. I'm like, sir, are you joking? Are you kidding? He's like, well, if you could put a little bit more money down. So I'm just at this point, I'm like doing it for shits and giggles. I was like, what about $15,000 down? Do I have $15,000? <laughs> no. When I tell you every fucking fiber of my being wanted to slap this man, I was really trying. I was really trying to be a good Samaritan, okay? Our winder Kelsey of Mississauga has a 2020 Toyota Tundra pickup truck. He recently got a letter from his insurance company saying he must install an anti-theft tracking device by the end of the month. I, I was looking at the letter and I was pretty shocked. The notice from TD Insurance said, without a tag anti-theft tracking system installed on your vehicle, you can expect a significant premium increase as of your renewal. It will cover the cost of installation up to $400 plus tax. Kelsey says he was told to pay for the device up front and he would be reimbursed. My renewal will be pretty much higher if I don't install these tags. So that's kind of a holding hostage uh, to, to consumers that if you guys don't do this, we will increase your premium. It's not just TD asking its customers to install these tracking devices. Other insurance companies like Aviva, Intact and Desjardins also want their customers with high risk vehicles to use the anti-theft system. The tag system is widely used in Quebec and has helped reduce auto theft there. The only reason why the thieves have moved into Ontario is because the majority of the vehicles that the thieves want are protected by the tag system in Quebec. With the tag system, there is wireless tracking and recovery, no signal jamming, logos are an instant theft deterrent, there is quick and efficient tracking and a proven recovery rate. As an example, the company says in the last 24 hours, 15 vehicles in the GTA have been stolen that have the tag tracking system. Out of the 15 I think 12 have already been recovered and the other three were waiting on the police to come and their, the cars are going to be all recovered. Kelsey still has concerns but says he will likely get the tag system as he doesn't want his insurance premiums to go up. I might as well get it installed because I don't see any other option. Pat Foran, CTV News. You'll be back soon you see you remember you belong to me I am not one of these TikTok people that are going to sit there and tell you the used car prices fell 0.00001%. Who fucking cares? I don't give a shit. When I bring vehicles on here, this is wholesale market. Okay? This is a, this is the auction site. Tax times rolling around, so people right are looking for fucking cash vehicles. This right here gives me insight as to why cash vehicles are becoming fucking extinct. And these $3,000, $3,500 things, like, you can't buy nothing anymore for that shit. You're going to have the winners on fucking TikTok. Like, the hell I can. I bought me a fucking 2015 Charger for fucking $300. Cool. This 04 Mazda with $169. All right.
bids at $3,400. Jeff Haas Mazda wants $4,000. Is it worth $4,000? Fuck no, it's not. But so let's say Jeff Haas Mazda is nice enough to let it go at $3,500. You have buyer fee, transportation, and then you have recon. When you go into a lot, I know y'all like this 04 Mazda, this should be two to $3,000. Remember this, your opinion on what a price should be on a vehicle does not matter because at the end of the day, that dealership is going to get whatever the fuck they want for that vehicle. I'm not talking about some new shit like, oh, I'm not talking about no 2019, 2018. I'm talking about the used car market. I'm talking about that older shit. You may not buy it, but somebody else will. This vehicle still retails at $7,000. I understand you're like, fuck that. I'm not paying that. These prices are fucking nuts. But not too long ago, you could buy this shit cheap and you could sell it for like exponentially cheaper what the fuck the resale value is on this vehicle. So you want this bitch for 3000 This dealership got like fucking four to 4500 in the vehicle. So of course they can't sell it to you at that price. You're like, oh, I went to fucking Ford or I went to the Dodge house. I, on my previous video, you can get some shit cheaper than you can probably anywhere else. Does it mean it's looked over? Fuck no. You're getting that traded shit, not a fucking soul looked over that bit. Again, I don't necessarily agree with this, but this is what the fuck is going on. So before what was cheap as fuck is no longer cheap as fuck. I understand back in the day you could get shit for $1,000, but we are so, so beyond that now. And lastly, salvage shit. Of course you can get shit like cheaper salvage. You see stuff all the time. You're like, oh, I can get me whatever the hell for this amount of money. Cool. Because salvage is real and it's flooding the market like crazy. So do your homework. It's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. 13, 14, 1200 on cars on one vehicle. The car payment. That is the thing. Yep, that is yep. the gap that keeps the middle class from becoming and building wealth. wealth. The average car payment, $717 right. for one person. And if you invested that money just over 30 years at a, a you know 10% rate, that's over $1.4 million. I am tired of being an adult. My car insurance ended this month, so it automatically renewed. And when I went to go look at the bill, tell me why it was $100 more than last month. So I give a call to my big pal, Jake from State Farm. And I'm like, hey, why did y'all raise my bill $100? <laughs> what is going on? And they have the audacity to tell me because inflation and because there's a car shortage. So used cars are worth so much money now that they're having to pay a lot of money on their end for people that wreck. But what's that got to do with me? Am I the one crashing? Am I the one your money's going to? No, absolutely not. So why are you charging me more when you should be charging them more? Ah, ah. Why am I being punished for someone else's mistake? I am this close to taking my car back to the dealership and getting a bike. You hear the good news, Dad? Used car prices, they're crashing, baby. What? <laughs> crashing where? In Zachville? <laughs> All right, so just the other day, we got the latest data from BlackBook. They track wholesale, wholesale, not retail, wholesale used car prices. And the market was down 1.45%, Dad, which is the steepest drop we've seen in over two and a half years. That being said, wholesale used car price drops don't necessarily correlate to retail used car price drops. Thank you for finally getting that. <laughs> All right, so here's a 2020 Ford F-150 pickup truck. I know we're blocking it, but Pops, this the seller is asking $36,294 for it. It's got 51,000 miles. Look at this. All right, this is the price history, Pops. As a new truck, it was a $40,000 truck. Yeah, so today it should be what, a $28,000 truck? So this is the unfortunate reality. Wholesale prices might be down 2.66%, but retail... Not down at all. Mm, it's hard to say, man. Hard yeah. to see. My disappointment is immeasurable. And my day is ruined.